All right, totally different video for you. Logic Pro on the iPad. Picked it up a couple weeks ago, and I gotta say, this thing is kind of blowing my mind. When I bought an iPad Pro just a couple of years ago, I've got a video on that. I tried out some of the different DAWs that are available to it, and there's some really cool stuff out there for sure, but I do feel like this one is the most streamlined and is going to take your iPad to totally different territories. There's some things in here that just get me super excited, so I'll show you those, and then I'll also talk a little bit about what I wish it did have. If you are somebody who has an iPad, and can see yourself getting out there and making music with it. The fact that you can go from Logic Pro on your iPad back to Logic Pro on your computer and then back to the iPad is pretty incredible. I'm gonna show you how well it works into my sampling workflow, how you can hook a keyboard up to it and actually use it as like a real music making device, but then just unplug it, take it to the park or whatever. So to me, getting away from the computer has always been kind of a dream. I've got the Machine Plus, I do a ton of videos on that. I did a video on Teenage Engineering's uh, OPZ, and I really got into that thing, even though it was so limited in terms of the storage that you could put on it. So I've got a video on that one too. I have, you know, visions of me taking this device and actually making real music with it. Not just chopping up a little sample and coming up with one fun little beat that goes nowhere, but actually making real songs, starting real songs on it, and then taking it into the studio. I did put it through its paces a little bit with my friend. I got her in here and we recorded some vocals, recorded some actual roads with some microphones, and I will have a video on that in the future. We'll talk about how you can edit vocals and stuff like that on the iPad. Would I recommend using this as your main DAW in a studio? No. I sure wouldn't, but you can do it, right? You can take this with you to some other place and record stuff and then bring it back to your studio. But that's not what I think this Logic Pro for iPad is all about, but you certainly can do that. Five bucks a month, stop paying it one month if you don't want to use it and then come back to it later, five bucks a month. It's like, we're literally talking about the price of one coffee per month. So I think the price is totally acceptable. And as much as I hate subscriptions with a passion, you'll find that on my, my channel, uh, I do feel like this one is, is acceptable. And I did just pick up Logic Pro. So I will be showing some Logic Pro stuff in the future. And I dabbled in Logic over the years, even showed it off at you know trade shows back in the day. But uh, it's been a while, so it's kind of fun to come back to it. I'm not going to switch any of the other programs that I use, but just add this to my list of things that I can show on my channel. So let's get into Logic Pro for the iPad. Sorry about the long intro, but I do feel like this is a game-changing device, and I hate that phrase. I really do. But this one is kind of worth it. So let's check out Logic Pro for the iPad. So you can see I've got it hooked up to my Arturia Keylab Essential 49. I've got a video on that one. It's brand new. A nice little keyboard works really well with, you know, your digital audio workstation. Still not there with something like Logic Pro for the iPad. So hopefully we get it to the point where we can actually use the transport controls and use the faders for the mixer and the knobs because that would make these buttons way more useful than they are when you're working with an actual DAW in your studio. And the reason is you've got transport controls and stuff like that, and we've got some muscle memory stuff that we can now replace the iPad with. Even though the iPad is all about touch and tactile and stuff, it's still a lot nicer to be able to just press play. Whereas when you're on your computer, what are you gonna do? You're probably just gonna hit your actual typing keyboard for play and stop. You hit that space bar and stuff like that. So that's where these knobs and faders and the transport controls and stuff like that are gonna become really useful, really practical. I'm also going through this Arturia Minifuse 4, which is class compliant. You can use it bus powered. It'll drain your iPad a lot quicker. So to start off with, you can hit the plus button to get a, a track, or you can just go over to the browser and start looking for sounds. So I think what I wanna show off in this video just a little bit is how easy it is to work with loops and samples. And you know, eventually you can take this thing out, record all the sounds you want with the iPad microphone, and then play with them. This is all self-contained. It's got everything on it. That's what I'm so excited about using the iPad for. A really beautiful browser. Let's go by drums. Look, we've even got categories like chill. Okay, that's perfect. So we've got a chill and like, look at all this metadata that you've got in there. Okay, so now we look at all the loops that we've got. We've got all these packs that it comes with and doesn't cost any extra money to download them all. So I put a whole bunch of packs on there. Let's click on full kit and then see if we can find a nice beat.
just hold and drag it onto a new track. If you drag it into the arrangement spot over here, you're going to get just a loop that gets dropped down and you can time stretch it and stuff like that. If you drag it over here, you can choose to put it on a sampler track. So I'm going to just let it go right there. And we've got Sample Alchemy, which is a new uh, virtual instrument, basically, that can load a sample and do all sorts of crazy stuff with it. Very excited with playing around with that one. We've got Quick Sampler, which is just your basic way to chop up any sound, a loop, or to pitch shift it, time stretch it, all of that kind of stuff, map it over the keyboard, map it over the pads. So we're gonna probably play with that one. And then Drum Machine Designer is just their way of loading in a sound on each pad. So you can make a, make a kit that you can play with the pads here or on a keyboard or whatever. And uh, you can also work with Quick Sampler and then output that to a Drum Machine Designer, which is very similar to working with Machine, chopping up a sample, and then you know dragging it onto the pad. So we're going to go to the quick sampler and just see how easy this is to work with. So I'm going to tap on it and then you get this kind of Ableton like preview down at the bottom which is kind of cool. You can add your effects right there, your insert effects. Double tap on the quick sampler. Now we can see our sample. We can drag this down a little bit. It's all this resizing stuff in Logic Pro for the iPad. And I saw someone saying they wish that things would just take over. And, but I kind of like this configurability of it. Okay, so you can see right away they've got some slices in there for me and I can play through those. Uh, I can find my own samples. I can even play them on the pads. And if we tap these little ellipses there, you're gonna see all sorts of parameters for all sorts of things in Logic. So that's that's where you're gonna find like these little drop down menus and stuff. So before we go and drop this onto a drum machine designer, there's things we can do in here. We've got an LFO on the whole thing. We've got filter that we could put on the whole thing. Filter. So of course that's going on the whole kit. Here we've got our amplitude. Check this out. You just you need the ADSR envelope. Just tap on it, and up pops our uh, our envelope settings. So now you can create your 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 attack, decay, sustain, and then we can do things like play with the pitch. And that's playing with the pitch of everything. And if we want to pitch individual hits, we can take this over to the drum machine designer and do that kind of stuff. So let's try that. Let's click on this little button right here. We go functions and we're going to go create drum machine designer track. So now it makes the track for us, plays it. Plays it at the tempo we are at. And anything in Logic Pro for iPad is usually just going to be some kind of touch away, right? So just tap the, the tempo and that's where we can go and change that. So start tapping the tempo in. Maybe we want something like two, three, four. Something like that. So now we're at 85. And then now you can see what's happened is it's put each one of those slices onto one pad. You just have to click this little pencil edit button. That's something you got to remember. So now I click on this one and I tap again and I can change the color. So let's make this one orange. Okay, so once you've done that, you can even go and change the piece name. So let's call this snare. So watch what I can do now with this. I can click on that kick right there. We're going to tap this little settings button for this kick so you can see what, what happens. I can drag this one up a little bit. And if I want to edit this one, tap on that. And let's tune it up to minus two. And so now look at these two. You can see that the tuning is different for each of those different samples. So that's how we're going to go in and start making some custom settings from one, one sound to another. So you can hear that the sample's already changed. And we can get really deep with this. So let's click on the snare, double tap on the quick sampler. And now we're seeing the quick sampler setting for this one little shot. We can go in and play with it if we got our timing off or something like that. But now what we do here is not going to affect what we do to the other one. And this is the part that's, that's really kind of blowing my mind. It's just so beautifully laid out and so perfectly integrated. So now we can go in make custom settings to each individual sample. We can time stretch it. We can actually change the pitch without changing the speed. So if you have some kind of chord thing, a piano thing or something like that, you can go in and change the pitch without changing the timing. And it all just works like that. So to me, this is this, these are the things that are kind of tricky with a lot of other sampling devices. And it's just dead easy with the iPad. So I'm just going to turn the click on and then press play.
So I can tap on that guy. I can resize it just like this. I can click on it and then hit over on the I button. And that's where you're going to find quantize settings. So let's turn the quantize on. And we'll set it to 16th note. And we'll have a swing of 50%. So let's show that in the editor. And things like you know zooming in on your MIDI information, very intuitive, very easy to use. I'm really not a big fan of the way Logic does velocity. I've never been a fan of that. I'd rather see those bars down at the bottom, so much easier to drag. But I'll get used to it. This is the velocity. The way of editing velocity on here is you have like a special tool for it. And you just drag up and down. I'm also not crazy about selecting things in Logic Pro for the iPad. I think on Cubasis, you just kind of drag a box and it selects everything in that box. If you want to select multiple nodes, you click on this little guy right here, and now we're selecting a bunch. It's, it is easy for you to accidentally click somewhere else and then deselect, which really sucks. But if I go select all, there we go. Now I can go over to quantize and let's do 16th. We'll quantize. Probably want more of a quantize, more of a swing than that. So let's drag the swing percentage up. I like how you can just watch the notes move if they're selected. That feels pretty good right there, 60%. And now let's have a look at another one of my favorite features, which is these chords that they've got in here. But before we do that, maybe we should just find a loop that goes with this. And uh, so I'm gonna go to the browser and we're gonna go to loops and let's get rid of drums and full kit. We'll leave it on this chill thing and we'll look for a piano. So let's go to piano and they've got all sorts of loops. They've got MIDI files as well, which you could drag onto a, an instrument track or you just drag it right into this area at the track list there and it'll turn it into a sample, which is also very cool. So it means you have a lot more samples than, than it appears at first. Okay, let's try this one. This is kind of fun. I'm going to click and drag. If I drag it over here, you can see that I get MIDI information, which I can then play with. And I can change all the chords up and stuff like that. So for, for arranging stuff, you know, go change the key. You don't have to worry about time stretching and stuff like that at all. You can change the chords, make new parts. You can make a bass line out of a loop by just deleting everything except for the bottom note, you know, and turning that into the baseline. But let's just leave that one muted for a second. And then what we'll do is we're gonna take Morning Dew Piano, and I'm gonna drag it right onto the track list, and we're gonna make a quick sampler out of it. Just for fun, I'm gonna grab this beat, and let's just drag this over to the track list, and look what it does. It allows you to turn any MIDI that you've got into a sample, just like that. This is going to be so much fun, honestly. Let's have a look at that one and double click on the quick sampler. There we can see my, my piano notes. Let's close the browser. Let's... I don't need that slice, so I'll just get rid of that one. So let's tap there and get rid of it. I could always change the sensitivity as well. So you'll see sensitivity right here is at 100. And if you drag that down, you get a lot less slices, but this is working really nicely. Let's get rid of this one. I'll just show you how the timing thing works. So now let's change the pitch of the whole thing. And the, you can hear the timing on that. And now what I can do is I can click on this guy right over here. And if I click follow tempo, now it's following the tempo. Ba, da, da, ba. If I press play, it's working with the tempo. So now watch what happens if I change the pitch. Da, 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 ba, ba. So all the timing stays. It's kind of hard to hear actually with that, that little clip, but the timing is staying now. If I hit that little follow tempo, it doesn't matter what I change the, the pitch to of all of these slices, they're gonna stay in time. So if I want this whole thing to be in a, in a different key, no problem, I just go and change it right here. Let's go up three semitones. Go right here and change our voices to one. Actually, we'll just set it to 
monophonic. There we go. And each note cuts off the last one, which of course is a beautiful thing. This is working so well, so easily. I can't even express how important this aspect is of sampling and just, they've made it just brilliant. So it's beautiful stuff. Now we can go in and play something in here. So now let's have a look at one more thing I'm super excited about with this one, and then we'll you know, reserve the rest of my ex explorations for future videos. And I am definitely gonna be making more videos on this because it's just way too powerful. But I'm gonna click plus for a new track, and I'm gonna go over to MIDI, and we're gonna go to our instrument. This is how you add new instruments, just from scratch on Logic Pro for the iPad, which took me a while to figure out. And we can see all of our audio unit stuff down at the bottom, but I'm just gonna to go to, let's go to Vintage Keys, and I just wanna show you uh, with an electric piano. We'll create that. And the, the thing I wanted to show you on this one is these chord pads. So part of the whole iPad experience is how do you play, you know, notes on the iPad that's so tiny. But these keys here are not very easy to play on. You know, I can, I can pull something like that off, but they've got other ways of playing notes in here. They've got drum pads for, the, for any time you're working with the drum stuff, a fretboard, which I probably wouldn't use very much. And then we've got chord strips. And this is the kind of stuff of dreams. I've seen stuff like this before where you, you know, tap a chord pad. We've got it in Cubase, we've got it in Machine. Check out what you can do with this one. If you start at the bottom, get different inversions of a chord that's like going. You get the ability to play really complex chord movement throughout the same chord. Every other chord pad that I've seen, it's like E minor, you're just playing the exact same E minor chord. So you can pull off some really cool creative stuff with these chords. And then I'm thinking, but man, it'd be nice to be able to go in and customize those. Well, of course we've got this little pencil right here. So we can tap on a chord and now we can go in there and go E minor, let's go seven. And we can get even crazier. E minor major seven. What does that sound like? Okay, so wait a sec, we got the bass down at the bottom, are you kidding me? So do you see what's happening? You've got the, the low notes in the bottom, like your bass line going back and forth. Sorry, anyways, what did that E minor major seven sound like? Kind of, kind of sound like James Bond, The Incredibles, something like that, right? That's a, when you have a minor triad with a major seven up top, sounds really cool. I can't believe we can pull this kind of stuff off so easily. Let's go E minor nine. It's gonna have an F sharp. Let's go back to that bass line. And then go to the A minor chord. change that one to minor, uh, let's go nine, actually let's go 11 on that. We've got E minor nine. Let's get an F major seven in there. To our A minor with the 11. This is gonna be sweet. And I'm just gonna make that. I know we've got an F over there, but let's just make this one F major, and then we're gonna go uh, major, F major seven. There we go. And now we've got. This is so cool. And of course, we can save that as a custom preset. I can imagine people making chord packs that are actually cool and useful. This is amazing stuff, honestly.
probably the, the most impressive thing to me on this whole thing. So I'm just going to mute that other one just for now. We're just going to play around with this just so you can hear it in action. And if I need to make my beat longer, which I do, the weird sort of copying system that they've got here is you tap that button. And now when I click and drag something, it makes a copy. So that's how you, you just copy your part over. So it's not too bad. Not sure if it's my favorite, but I'm, I'll get used to it. So let's play something in. Amazing stuff. And you can see all the MIDI that I've just played is put in there. Edit that. I can quantize it. I can change the notes. I can fix the notes. But we're talking about really useful actual tools to make music on this and not to make just kind of some dinky little sequence. We're actually making notes on here that people would be interested in listening to, you know? So people who don't play keyboards are gonna really benefit from this ability to just kind of play these rhythms, learn about some cool chords, program in your own chords and then play them. Oh man, really, really exciting stuff here on the iPad. And I'm not getting paid to make this video. I'm not, it's not sponsored in any way. It's just really impressive tech. So I'm super excited about it. I hope you guys are too. I'm gonna to show you another video how of course you can set scales. So you could solo around over top of stuff like this. I'm also going to, you know, use this for sampling my own stuff and playing around with that. And then I've got a, a actual video coming up where I can show you recording vocals and how, you know, how that works because it actually works pretty nicely. Anyways, big shout out to Jeffy G, not me. He uh, has some great videos. I'm going to post a link to his videos in the description. But there was a few things on the iPad version here, which I was totally stuck on. And his videos really helped me out with that. And then another one I've been watching is Pete Johns. Really useful, really helpful. So make sure you go check out his channel as well. Anyways, more Logic Pro for iPad stuff coming up and maybe even some Logic Pro on the Mac videos coming up as well. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and bell and I'll see you in the next video.